Well, first of all, wow, what a turnout. This is is how we get to the in November. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm former State Representative Mary Valentine, and um, I just want to welcome you here today, and um, thank you for coming. What a wonderful turnout, and it's so great to see everybody here, and it's so great to see old friends I haven't seen for a while, and meet new ones, so thanks a lot. Um, I'm going to say a few words about Tanya, but first I'd like to take a minute just to introduce elected officials and people who are running and notable guests that we have here today. And what I'm going to do is when I call your name off, just stand, and please remain standing until the very end. And I'm going to ask you, the audience, uh, not to clap until we get to the very end, and then give everybody a big hand. But, and we want to give everybody a big hand because the people that are standing are the people who run for office and who serve in those positions. And without them, we would not have a democracy at all. So they are the heroes of our democracy. So we want to give them a big hand, but we'll wait to the end and make things go a little faster that way. Okay, Sean Mullally, he's the trustee at Muskegon Community College. And he's already standing. He's already standing. Can you raise your hand? Oh, okay, there you go. Mac Hatch, former mayor of Whitehall. Uh, Colleen Lamonti, former state representative in the 91st District. Ken Johnson, city council in Muskegon. Raise your hand, Ken. <laughs> Thank you. Terry Hempel is the Fruitland Township trustee. Terry's way back over there. Jennifer Barnes, chair of the Muskegon County Democratic Party. Jennifer's in back there. Jen Hain, candidate for city council in Whitehall. Yeah. L.A. Dennis, Whitehall City Council. Uh, Deb Griffin, president of the Progressive Democratic Women's Caucus. <laughs> and Mitch Dennison, chair of the ACLU Lakeshore. Did I call Norm Kittleson? No. Oh, Norm Kittleson, sorry. Uh, running for uh, city hall or city council in Whitehall. And, and Marsha Hubby Wright, state, former state representative in the 92nd district. And every time I do this, there's someone I forget. So if I have forgotten you, please raise your hand. You don't forget me. <laughs> you never knew me. I never knew you. Are you a former? I served 16 years on the monitor city. Okay, and what's your name again? Dick Hood. Okay. Uh, former uh, Montague. Montague, Montague City Councilman. <laughs> okay. Want to stand up? Well, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's give them all a nice big round of applause. And thank you, all of you, for, for your service. As we all know, we're currently facing some rather large and unique challenges. And that is why, at this time, more than ever, I believe we must elect leaders who are thoughtful. We need leaders who will think things through, weigh the pros and cons, and come up with well thought through decisions. We need leaders who are persistent. I see state representatives who introduce a bill and you never see it again after they get their headlines. But we need people who are persistent and will work on those bills to get them passed. And we need people who truly care about the, um, about the people that they're serving so they'll make uh, so that they will make legislation that will help those people. And that is exactly what we have in Tanya Kabala, which is why I have chosen to be on her team and support her. Um, those are the things, those are the qualities I think we need right now, and that's what we have with her. And since Tanya did pursue a life in public service, rather than pursuing a goal of making a lot of money, um, it's more important than, than ever to, for us to help her financially. Um, she will need to purchase yard signs, um, mailings, she'll have to need money for mailings, There'll be, she'll need a headquarters, a staff. All of these things cost money. Now all of us wish there was no such thing as needing money in politics, but without being able to use all those tools, it would be very difficult for anyone to win. And there's not just one, some big pot of money somewhere that when you're running for office, people just give you all this money. And I've run for office and I know this from a fact, for a fact, there just isn't that. It just starts with friends and neighbors and people who want to see someone be elected to that post give whatever we can. And everybody has a different level that they can give, but all of us can pitch in. So before we get started, before I introduce the other speakers, I'll just kick it off with my own contribution. I'm going to contribute $100 uh, right now, and then I'm going to do that every month until I get my $1,000 in. So here's, here's a big contribution. Every time you make a contribution, you have to give this information. That's what the state asks for. 
uh, so that they so that we all are who's giving money to candidates. So, yeah.